Good. Shall we start? Cool. Perfect. So thank you for coming today. Uh, it's great that you picked this session over the other, so thank you very much. <laughs> I appreciate that. Uh, so I'm going to talk about uh, uh, Vuex and uh, uh, Vue.js. How many of you are know Vue.js or are working with Vue.js? Slightly less. Are working with Vuex? OK. <laughs> Perfect. Okay, I hope that you will find interesting this session. So, uh, my name is Luca. Uh, I'm a chief architect at The Zone. Uh, the Zone is a, a British company um, that the final aim is uh, conquer the world. Uh, we have a platform uh, that is a broadcast platform for sport, uh, similar to Netflix if you think about that, but we are broadcasting sport, not movies. We have live content and video on demand. Um, I'm a Google Developer Expert on web technologies, and uh, I'm the community manager of the London JavaScript community. Uh, we organize events uh, uh, around London. Uh, it's now almost three years that we are doing that, and um, with, with a decent success. So if you are in London, based in London, you're interested to uh, listen to interesting topic on JavaScript, check out on meetup.com. You can find me at, uh, on Twitter on, uh, on that uh, username. So in the last few months, I like uh, um, eight months, uh, I spent um, a lot of my spare time of writing this book. Uh, it's called Frontend React Architectures, and today I would like to give away one of these. So I thought that uh, let's let's use some gamification for doing that. At least it's a little bit more interested, interesting. Um, so if you write. Uh, uh, a tweet during this talk uh, with that hashtag, uh, VueXIJS. At the end of, of the talk, I will stop and I will give away for the best tweet this, this book. Okay? Easy like that. So what we are going to talk about today. So uh, I will give a brief introduction to Vue.js. Uh, then I will talk about Vuex. Uh, I prepare an example. Um, currently, the, the, the cryptocurrency apparently is a cool topic. So let's, let's play with that. Uh, and, uh, and then at the end, how to scale up uh, a Vuex project uh, that obviously, mm, in a certain way, is not only uh, focused on Vuex, but I will try to use that. So let's start immediately with uh, um, talking about Vue.js. So Vue.js, this is the, the, the classic thing that you can find in, in the Vue.js website. It is, it's a library for building interactive uh, web interface. Fine. Uh, the goal is uh, to provide, uh, uh, it provides benefits like uh, reactive data binding and composable view um, components. Um, that is uh, with a simple API. That's, uh, that's nice, but often when I, s I read these kind of things, I start to dig in because, uh, you know, uh, very commercial and, and I want to understand what there is behind the scene. So I started to dig a little bit inside that uh, and uh, um, I started to understand a little bit uh, about Vue.js. So Vue.js is not a full framework. Think about Vue.js similar to, to React. But uh, Vue.js uh, has uh, a super nice ecosystem. Uh, I saw that in, in, in React, I'm following, uh, let's say, front-end technology since um, 2003. So it's been a while that uh, I'm playing with, with front-end technologies. Um, and, um, uh, and I saw, let's say, uh, React growing very fast. But uh, Vue.js is, is coping up very well. And the interesting thing is uh, uh, one thing that I, I can um, uh, say um, as, a, as a, a developer, uh, playing with APIs of Vue.js is really, really simple. And uh, uh, probably a vast majority of you know very well. Um, but uh, Vue.js allows you to, uh, let's say, to, to create a simple architecture that is the one that I, um, I showed you here, uh, where we have like uh, the view that is basically our uh, Vue.js components. We have, uh, um, we have uh, let's say, some, um, uh, the view model that is created by, by Vue. And then we have, uh, uh, we have the model where we store our data. So it's really simple. And uh, it's something that is well known in, in, uh, in the front end uh, community. Um, the view, uh, view model uh, architecture, uh, the VVM, VM, uh, VVM uh, is uh, very well known. And we, we use, uh, was introduced by Microsoft several years ago. So it's, uh, it's very well known and is used in several languages. I think this implementation is really neat and, and nice. Um, the other thing is, is leveraging the, con the concept of components. And this is something that is uh, very important, in particular when we talk about scalability. Because when you uh, are, are capable to wrap uh, your code inside the component, you can potentially reuse your component uh, fairly easily. 
obviously, you need to be smart in the way how you wrap your code. And we will see later on in this talk uh, how we are going to do that. Um, the other thing that I, I really like is how they are handling uh, the update of the DOM um, with reactive data binding. So um, reactive programming is something that is not new. It was create, it was, let's say, um, we started to talk about that in the 70s. So it's been a while that it's around. We started to see more on, uh, um, on, on the front end a few years ago. Uh, I started to research on this um, almost four years ago, uh, where basically no one was uh, writing stuff or, or uh, creating content for, for active programming. And that for me became a passion. Um, and uh, honestly, finding so many uh, framework at the moment that are uh, leveraging the concept of reactive programming is great. Um, the other interesting thing is uh, the update of the DOM uh, from uh, from Vue.js is pretty smart. Is uh, um, let's say is is an asynchronous way that are doing that, and that is uh, smart in the sense that um, they they are uh, in a certain way picking their battle in the way how they they make their application very perform performant, uh, adding queues uh, and uh, waiting for the next tick before it starts to uh, do a, a render on uh, on the view. So it's really cool. But before we go ahead, because at the end of the day, Vue.js uh, um, is hiding the complexity of reactive programming. What I would like to, to explain now is a little bit uh, more about, about this uh, paradigm. Um, because often I see that is misunderstood. Often reactive programming uh, I saw associated with RxJS, and that's it. But reactive programming is way more. It's a programming paradigm. And uh, it differs between interactive uh, for, for uh, um, a quite substantial thing. So usually in interactive uh, programming, when you interact with an object, you have an object A that maybe is in, um, we inject inside object A the object B. And then object A knows how to use the object B. So you start to write something like, OK, I inject when I create a, um, the, the, an instance of object A the object B, and they start to say inside the code B dot something. So it means that you know the contract of this object. You know exactly how to handle that. But in, in reactive, it's completely the, other, the opposite way. So we try to decouple this object in this way. So we try, um, in a certain way, to work. Instead of having a direct connection to B with A and knowing the control of B, we just uh, communicate with, uh, uh, between the two with a third object. So in, um, um, usually in reactive programming, several uh, very reactive framework, like CycleJS, for instance, uh, they use observables that we will see um, uh, later on, more or less. I have another talk uh, in this afternoon, so if you're interested, I, I will drill down on that topic uh, more. Um, we will see later on how they work. But at the end of what it, what, uh, what's happening is A is communicating that something changed, and B is listening for that and reacting for that. And it's exactly the same concept we are using with, uh, um, with view. Because in fact, when we create a view object and we have some data that we store inside the view, um, instance and th these data are changing, automatically everything is propagated to the view. We don't have to say view.update or view.render, whatever it is. And that is, uh, uh, in a certain way, uh, you have a boilerplate that is working behind the scene for you, and we will see in a moment how, uh, that um, it providing you the reactivity that you're looking for without uh, making your code complex. So if you take, for instance, a simple example of view, this is a uh, uh, from, from directly from the guide. I didn't invent, uh, reinvent the wheel. Uh, so we, we create our view that is just a simple uh, div. We have our model that is a plain um, JavaScript object. And it, the magic happens uh, where we have the, the view instance. So there, basically, we are tightening together our view and our uh, data. And this is pretty cool, because if you think about that, currently we are decoupling in a nice way uh, the, other, uh, the other part of the application, so the view and the model. Uh, and we are just, um, let's say, putting them together inside the view instance. Uh, and that's very important, because example data, and in particular the view, that is one part that I, um, I uh, often iterate with, with the developers that I'm working with, has to be dumped more the, the view is, in a certain way, stupid and uh, doesn't understand how the things are working, more you can reuse. And this is one of the fundamental things that you, uh, that you need to think when, when you structure your application um, at scale on multiple devices. For instance, in my company, we're handling around 20 targets between smart TV, consoles, stuff like that. The vast majority of them are 
uh, JavaScript. And the, the fact that, that we, we have, let's say, dump view allows us to swap them at compile time or runtime, it depends, um, in an easy way, maintaining the same logic, maintaining the same 80% uh, of the code. And that's the one of important thing of what we are doing. So um, how does, does view update the, the DOM? So DOM is updated asynchronously, uh, as I said before. And, and this is uh, um, a really nice diagram that I found uh, in, um, uh, from, from um, uh, the Vue.js um, documentation, where basically you are seeing, um, I think it's here, I can, okay, it doesn't matter. Uh, so uh, you can see that every time that, um, um, there, is, that there is some getter and setter, so this part is, is super interesting for me, because this part is where you have uh, uh, in a certain way their activity. So every time that there is something that is happening inside of you, you start, you have some watcher that are interactive with this, and then, then they are preparing, they are asking to the component to render the function. That is, uh, is really, really cool. So usually when we do a change, we always uh, queue the change, we filter the change, because it could happen that you want to apply behind the scenes several times the same change. So what, the, what uh, uh, view is doing that is very smart, adding the queue allows them to filtering the, uh, let's say, things that are happening inside the queue and just providing one of the multiple identical changes that could happen inside the DOM. And we all know that updating the DOM is one of the most critical things that you can have inside um, uh, your application because performance-wise, it could be very uh, heavy. Um, the, the, the other things that it's doing is applying the, the change only on the next stick. So that means it's, it's running completely asynchronous in a way that allows you to perform better. And you don't need to know these things, but it's really nice uh, and smart the way how they are doing uh, applying the queue uh, in front of everything. Um, the other thing that I, I, I started to, to dig a little bit about uh, Vue and uh, how it's working in this paradigm uh, is uh, the reactivity part, because I'm, I'm really, in a certain way, obsessed about that part, uh, in a positive way, by the way. Uh, so uh, usually what, what they are doing in Vue currently is exactly this. So we have object.define property that is used for doing metaprogramming, if you want. And the nice thing of, uh, uh, of this is that we can um, let's say, um, understand when an object changes. So when uh, from, uh, I don't know, a, an object that is your target, uh, someone is calling externally a specific method or a specific property of this object, and we can do something with that. And this is exactly how Vue works. So their activity in views is exactly this. So what we are doing is, every time that we are calling the data object that we saw before, and something changed at that time, there is this uh, we apply behind the scene. They are applying this object-defined property that is wrapping the, uh, let's say, the, the data object, and is saying, and it has visibility also on, on on the view in a certain way. And what he's doing is saying, okay, so th this data is changed, this property is changed, so it's time to update that. And they are doing literally on this. Um, on this method here. So you can find the implementation, I, I have put here a uh, URL that is uh, how you can find the implementation uh, inside, inside Vue. Um, the interesting part is um, mm, uh, that in 2.6 Next, uh, they are starting to use uh, something more ES6 oriented because object uh, define property was, uh, let's say, used uh, way before uh, with proxies. proxies. Uh, and uh, the proxy is, uh, um, I don't know if you ever use this, um, is an object that allows you to do exactly this. So usually with a proxy, you have uh, a target and uh, um, an handler. And inside your handler, you can set some traps that will notify you when something is changing on the target object. So you basically basically are um, decorating your object, having an, an external object that is listening every time that something is changing. And this is a really nice thing. You can use for, for several things the proxy, also in your code. It's really, really nice how it's, uh, it's implemented. But their question is, uh, mm, okay, is uh, view, we understand is really nice. You can do a lot of nice things, but how can we structure a Vue.js project? Um, so um, when I started to dig in on that, uh, I found in Vuex uh, a really uh, cool way to handle that. So uh, currently, uh, as you know, in, uh, if you are familiar with other framework uh, or libraries, there are several um, 
centralized store available there. We saw before this morning, um, uh, there was uh, one of my colleagues spoke about Mobax State Tree. Uh, there was uh, before me another talk on um, Redux. Uh, so there are several of them uh, outside there. But Vuex uh, is, um, is very uh, neat. I, I found it uh, really easy to pick it up and also to, to, to write code with. Um, the interesting thing is uh, um, that the state, and this is the problem that we are solving here uh, can only be mutated in a predict predictable fashion. And that, for me, is, is the most important thing, because when we are debugging as developers, it's very, very hard to find, uh, let's say, a, a quick way to, to find a bug, in particular when we have massive applications. So having, uh, uh, let's say, a framework that allows, you, uh, uh, allows us to, to, to work uh, in a safe way is very important. So a uh, few characteristics of, uh, of uh, uh, Vuex. Vuex is a, a state management pattern uh, uh, for, for Vue.js project. Fine. Uh, is implementing the Flux pattern. OK, so uh, Flux pattern, mm, probably you are familiar with Flux. It was created by Facebook several times ago, uh, several years ago. And, uh, but if Flux is not just a framework. It's also a, a pattern that was introduced. Uh, basi basically, uh, is leveraging the concept of uh, unidirectional flow. So every time that, uh, uh, um, and we will see in a moment this, so every time that the, the, there is an update, so that someone is interacting with the view, uh, the data are flowing in only one direction. And they, are, they have created that mainly for one reason. Imagine in Facebook when you have like hundreds of developers that are working on the same code base. And you have to onboard new developers. That is probably something that is happening on, on your, in your companies as well. And when you do that, uh, you need to explain each single piece of code, how the logic is applied. But if you have a unidirectional flow with a strong separation of concern, it's really, really easy to pick it up. Because you know that one thing, uh, one specific area of your application is just, I don't know, retrieving data, fetching data from an endpoint. And another uh, part of the application is doing, um, I don't know, the rendering, is, um, the rendering of, of, of the view. So all these kind of things are really well uh, defined. But also, the real problem that we are facing here is how all these small pieces are communicating together. And having a unidirectional flow, it, it facilitates everything. So the other thing that I love about, about uh, the Vue ecosystem is um, the plugin system that they, they created. So Vue, uh, Vue uh, instance is really, really tiny, per se. Uh, the beauty of this is that allows us to work in, uh, um, in composition more than working with inheritance. That is one of the best practices that you should always take in consideration. And uh, every time uh, we will see when I show the, the code, well, every time that we use uh, Vue.js and we want to add a specific uh, library that would work with, basically what is happening is that he's taking the view instance and decorating it, adding some functionalities that we retrieve always inside the view object. It's basically what uh, we are doing every time that we work with a window object uh, inside our JavaScript projects. That we try to append everything there. So how it works with JS? So first of all, we talk about the flux pattern. And this is what we have, right? So you see that the arrows are always going in one direction. There is no way that you can handle it in, in different ways. So we have our view components uh, that uh, every time there is an interaction by the user are uh, uh, dispatching an action. Inside the action, the action is taking care of retrieving data, remote data from a backend, um, or passing data from a backend. It depends what, what you have to do. Uh, then is uh, uh, dispatching the, the let's say the what they uh, found inside the mutation, and the mutation is the only one that can change the state. So if you see about that, is clear uh, responsibility of each single element. So this one is for rendering the view, and the only thing that they know is just dispatching events, uh, dispatching actions. Sorry. So when these uh, are co, uh, this action is performing some stuff with the remote. Uh, API. So we are wrapping the competence or notifying something and wrapping the data inside the action. Then these are triggering uh, the mutation. And the mutation basically are validating the data and are uh, then preparing the data for, for the state. The state, what it is, is just a plain object. That is where we can understand exactly how our system works. And every time that we have uh, the state updated, reactivity in place that updated the view. Uh, the view component. Uh, this is how uh, how um, Vue.js Vue uh, works, and uh, um, and if it looks simple, it's because it is simple, uh, and that's the thing that is uh, um, 
very interesting for me. So uh, if you are tired about uh, uh, listening to me and talk, uh, talking about Vuex, it's time to see some, some code that I think is more interesting. So what we are, uh, I'm going to talk about is this. So um, in my spare time, uh, I, I like to, to do some, um, uh, let's say, uh, projects uh, in a certain way, nothing uh, compared to what definitely you do on, on, on working hours, but uh, this is something that I, I created just to uh, understand a little bit how I feel uh, working with uh, uh, Vuex and, and um, Vue.js. Uh, so you can find the, the repository and in my GitHub account. Uh, so let's go for a moment inside code. OK, so let's first start with something that is working, hopefully. Good. OK, so this is what we have. Can you see it at the bottom? Hmm? Perfect, cool. Uh, so let's assume that you are, um, you are let's say, embracing the, the cryptocurrency uh, stock market and uh, you are a big fan of Bitcoin, right? So boom. So what we have is uh, a simple search, um, input text, and we have uh, then, oh, maybe you are not very familiar with uh, uh, some of the uh, symbols that are available, and there are quite a few of them. <laughs> I discovered that I didn't know that as well. It was quite interesting. Uh, so I hope that we pick one that doesn't have O0 exactly like this. Uh, perfect. So you see that uh, this is a chart. Um, so in this example, in the code, you will see some uh, uh, not, uh, not much consistency in some part of the application, mainly because I did on purpose to show different things inside this application. So for instance, this one is, uh, um, let's say, one uh, uh, chart, this one component, is a library that is available for, for, for Vue uh, that I used uh, uh, to wrap the entirely the, the logic of uh, displaying data. So I tried to keep as dumb as possible and, and use uh, exactly as it should be. So wrapping uh, only the, the views and all the APIs that he has, feeding with some data, that's it. Uh, then what we have, uh, we have a title, we have the icon, and we have other stuff. We have the table with the last month of, of data. Um, and uh, in a certain way, we can also resize everything. This one is a canvas, uh, so therefore that's why you have like the smooth animation, stuff like that. Uh, but we will see later on how I handle this. OK, so everything starts here. Oh, hang on. Let me, because it's really small. Can you read that? Yes, perfect. OK. So everything starts here. Uh, what we have is uh, uh, an instance of view. Uh, we, again, we, are, we have our store. The store is basically where we uh, collect our uh, business logic and we store our, uh, our data. Um, we have the render function that allows us to, to render our uh, component. And the first thing that we are rendering, starting from there, is, is the app. So um, Vue allows you, as you know, different style of writing uh, uh, components. Um, my favorite one at the moment, maybe I will change my mind, is defining a template, style, and script uh, in the same file, try to get to have, let's say, an understanding how to uh, divide the things. So basically here I'm creating uh, like this, uh, my, my custom components uh, inside, the, inside the application that allows me to uh, then, let's say, import from, from somewhere else. So as you can see here, I have my components list uh, in the script where I just literally have a dumb, a dumb component that, uh, sorry, a dumb uh, script that contains just a list of the things that I'm using, nothing else. Uh, if we saw in, instead the, the other inter interesting part, the store, uh, sorry, uh, what we have is, is uh, here the beauty of, of and the elegance of, of uh, Vuex. So the first thing is we import uh, Vuex. And in order to say, OK, I want to use Vuex in my project, I just decorate the, when we say, we say view.use, we are basically decorating, adding functionalities inside the, the view component. And then we instantiate a, a store. Uh, we set, I set strict because it allows you to have, uh, let's say, uh, better code and it does some, some checks for you without uh, uh, bothering every time to, to check these kind of things. And then uh, here we start with the beauty of this. So what we have is just imagine like a, a big object that contains multiple objects uh, that each of them has its own uh, logic. So what I'm trying to do at the beginning when, we, when I started to uh, work on this, uh, on this project, I started to understand uh, inside um, my 
uh, ideal view, how I would structure the, the, the project. So one thing in uh, usually when you work on um, architecture that works uh, uh, very very well on backend, but I think with some of the concepts should be applied on the front end as well, uh, is the domain-driven design. So one thing that to explain you in domain-driven design is the fact that you uh, you need to divide by domain and create, uh, let's say, some separation of concern. You have, uh, let's say, on, on backend is way more complicated than this. But if we take just the small bit of uh, try to figure out which is the domain, what identify is, uh, we have a store for, for that is just for the search, one is for, for the coins, and another one is, is for the crypto uh, currency that I delete, so basically the, the cryptocurrency that I deci decided to, to see. And each of them has its own logic. This one could be either um, pair one-to-one -one with the view, or it could be, let's say, uh, uh, feed multiple views. It's, uh, it's up to you. Obviously, my suggestion is let's try to keep it simple, because as much as you can map one-to-one -one the view with the store, then you can take the view and the store and re reuse in another project. I don't know where uh, you are working, but often, uh, in my experience, when I work in uh, um, uh, in an agency, I found this very useful for uh, reusing components across multiple um, uh, across multiple projects. Um, okay, so here basically we are just defining what what the things are doing, and then we start to have uh, to have fun. So, for instance, let's pick search. So, search is uh, let me do this. Search is um, a very simple thing. So we have search by symbol. Uh, this is a syntax of view that I think the vast majority of you knows, um, where we have like uh, uh, some some symbol. We retrieve some symbol if it's um, uh, let's say the, the values if it's written in a certain uh, from from a store. Uh, we have a placeholder. Fine. Every time that we click the button, then uh, this is the interesting thing. So we basically trigger this function. It's called change symbol. But as you can see here, I don't have any explanation of this. So Vuex is providing this uh, uh, method. We will see later on others of them. Um, map actions, basically what it does is creating a function for you uh, and saying uh, Vuex.dispatch and what you want to dispatch as action. So basically, it is providing the, the let's say it's wrapping the boilerplate for you, and you just say, okay, I have a set of action inside this view. I don't want to write repetitive code every, uh, code every time. So I just they provide this util that is uh, saying map actions, and in this way, adding uh, the um, uh, the structuring uh, inside inside map before map action. What I can do is extending these methods and adding multiple methods that maybe are uh, used for uh, for other things. We will see that in a moment. So what we are doing basically is. Every time that I click this button, I have I call this change symbol that is not described because it is handled by by Vuex behind the scene. That's that's uh, uh, a cool thing that uh, uh, Vuex provide you uh, out of the box. One suggestion that I have, because these, uh, so mm, one thing that I, 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 I didn't feel uh, very comfortable when I work with you, when, when I work with Vuex, they worked a lot with strings. And, and strings uh, is um, amazing uh, as long you wrap them inside the constant. <laughs> So uh, this is the classic way that you start on. You, you don't understand why something is not updated because maybe you um, I don't mistype a character or whatever. Wrap it. Uh, this is a suggestion you can find also in the documentation. Wrap it inside a constant, and you will be fine because you write once, and at least uh, then you have the, your editor or IDE that is helping you to write these things. Um, so we, we click this button. And then what we have is we are starting to uh, inside the search store. What we have is is this. So this is the store in in, in uh, uh, let me close this again uh, in uh, Vuex. So what we have is the three things that we described before. We have the actions here at the bottom. We have mut mutations and we have the state. Okay. So it's always in the same way. So what we have is. Uh, we have reset research. We have uh, um, a set symbol, uh, and uh, and what we do is when we set the symbol, basically, um, I, I put everything uppercase because the API wanted that, uh, and that's absolutely fine. I can reset the research, but as you can see, what I'm doing is I receive the action here. Uh, I have here, and the first element uh, um, of each action, uh, I have an object that I, I can through um, the structuring I can retrieve some elements that I need. So in this case, I retrieve the commit and. 
and I can have also an additional uh, value, just one, uh, inside the action for uh, bringing some value with my, my uh, action. So for instance, if I have, uh, the, the first one is always reserved for view X, the second one is just for you, you can add any element that you want. So every time that I do that, then I have to say, okay, so I receive this information, I want to store this information or, uh, or manipulate this information inside my state. So what I do, I call commit, that is the method that is going to call uh, my, my uh, mutation and what the mutation does is the only one in strict mode that can update the um, uh, the state. So there isn't any other way that you can update the state. So the only the all is always the same thing. So you receive this thing from from the user interaction. Commit will call a mutation. Mutation will set the state. State updated. Reactivity update on the on the mod on on the view. And it's always the same thing. So what we are doing here, we are storing a temporary symbol that is typing by by the user because we can reuse later on. But this is uh, let's say. Uh, a, a very simple thing. So let's go in something uh, in the stores that are um, more interesting on that. Uh, so for instance, let's pick the one is this one. I can show you a few other things. Uh, yes, so this one for instance. Okay, now this one I have to start from uh, here. So uh, as you know, Vue.js uh, has the possibility to have some uh, life cycle method. So this one is, for instance, mounting. So when a component is mounted, and what I did in my uh, in my drop down is uh, uh, loading uh, all the coins available, all the list of the coins available uh, inside that. So I, I call that uh, in uh, uh, when when the component is mounted. What I did here is exactly what we do with map actions. So we we usually create a method, and then we can say this. Um, dollar store that is, is the part that is decorated in Vue.js is exposed by Vue.js um, and uh, uh, dispatch and we, sp we say what we are dispatching. When we do map actions it's exactly the same thing but it's in, in, a, in a, a short and concise way. Um, so let me move on. So when I select something like that, uh, what I do here, uh, I'm, I'm doing performing some uh, uh, Checks. So what I'm doing here, uh, I'm retrieving, I'm fetching the data from my crypto compare uh, API that I found available for free on, on the web. Fine. Um, so um, the thing is um, for for load coin. So what I'm doing is see the object. I'm, I'm retrieving also the root state because I need to store some information that are shared across multiple store. This is another problem that you can find in uh, uh, when when you architect something with, with Vuex. So usually you need to find a way to simplify your life and uh, wrap your uh, elements in, um, in in the in the root store because it's quickly accessible because if you start to have knowledge of how the different stores are uh, composed your application it becomes very unusable and, and it becomes unusable in the sense that you can you cannot reuse that store so in a certain way you need to find a quick way to share the information without um, they say have too much knowledge of the entire application because otherwise you start to coupling stuff so I'm, I'm retrieving the data and when I retrieve the data uh, I, I just uh, uh, store this information again inside the mutation so there is a change of symbol uh, I've wrapped all the logic of uh, preparing the chart data j mainly because is uh, uh, I respected the API the API weren't let's say the best in the world therefore there was a lot of noise so I tried to wrap everything in a utils uh, that provide me the data that, that the chart was uh, looking for but what I'm doing here is basically um, doing so some this, this mutation and here there is something uh, interesting so uh, one thing that I have inside these coins uh, do you remember uh, my table at the moment that is this one at the bottom so this one as you can see starting from the 11 of April uh, to back to the I think 11 uh, 12 of March okay so last month these data obviously are um, uh, are reversed. So we start from the day that is closer to, to today uh, and, and we go back a month. Um, in order to do that, let's imagine that you have several, uh, let's say, components that need this data in a chronological order, not from, uh, let's say, the, a month ago, but from today uh, backward. So usually you use getters. What, what the getters does is something uh, really, uh, really cool. So um, it's basically preparing the status, uh, so this, this data that is state 
Fiat.Currency data, uh, and I reverse them, so I do an operation to manipulate my array. And from now on, if the currency data are not going to change, I always serve uh, this data directly from the getters. So that means uh, for us, less computation. So if I imagine that we have like 10 components that are retrieving this data, I'm not doing the reverse every time. I'm doing the first time, and then I always serve a computed value. Um, then, let me see here. Um, another interesting thing, I think this is the last one of this example. Uh, let me see. Uh, is this one? No. Uh, let me open. Yes, is the. So this one is another library that I use. Uh, it's very simple. It's just to, 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 to explain a little bit of things. So here we have eCharts uh, that is one of the library that you can find that works very well with, with Vue. And um, you can use that uh, with Vue very easily. Uh, so in this case, you know, as you can see, there is a lot of APIs that are completely dependent of this, uh, of this uh, chart. And what I'm trying to do here uh, is uh, wrapping all of them in a way that, uh, it, that doesn't go around my, my code base. So what I'm doing is uh, basically uh, providing all the, the data. Um, uh, where is it? Where is the other size? This props cur currency uh, history. And basically, what I'm doing is through, through the properties that are exposed by, by Vue.js, I pass in this information that will allow me to fetch, uh, to, to feed out my, um, my component and have the nice animation that is uh, out of the box. You just need to configure a few things. But also in this case, uh, let's say the code is very well encapsulated and it doesn't. Uh, so if we see how is uh, then use this inside the, um, inside the, 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 the cryptocurrency. Yeah, candlestick. So it's, it's literally something very, very small. As I said before, we have map action, but we have also map getters. So again, same thing, boilerplate that is provided by, by Vuex for, for handling this. So this, this one is a really nice example uh, that it provides, let's say, quite a few things that I, I tried in order to, to cope up with to, for creating this and to cover a few of the things that uh, I wanted to show you today. Um, OK. so. How can I scale that? Okay. The first thing that I learned in my experience is exactly this. The main challenge is not scaling on front end some code or whatever, but is how we scale the team. And that's the reality. Because if you think about, I'm, I'm currently uh, I'm working with around uh, 200 tech people between QAs and um, um, engineers and uh, um, front end, back end. Uh, and it's, uh, it's not easy, in particular when it is distributed. And probably it's not just me that is feeling this pain. So the real thing here is how we are capable to have an architecture like Vuex or any other that will allow us to feed all these teams that uh, are not having the problem of wasting their time. Oh, sorry, I broke your code. I need to review my, my commit and, and do these things. Because when are, is, you are inside a small room, everything is fine. You solve these things quickly. But when you are distributed and you have 200 people that you don't know in which time zone they are or stuff like that, it starts to become tricky. Um, so the first thing that I suggest is, is this. So starting to split action and, and mutation. So as we saw before, at the end of the day, these things are just objects. So you can start to, if you are um, capable to write them in an uh, uh, in atomic way that will al allow you to reuse potentially action, mutation, getters, and, and state in, in a nice way, this is the first thing that you should invest your time to. Because that one will save a lot of, uh, um, um, let's say, time and complexity later on in the project. Uh, divide an application by domain. This one, uh, if it's not directly you that usually uh, does this kind of thing, so you, you have an architect or a tech lead, is an, an investment that I warmly suggest to do to everyone. Before you, you start to write a line of code and you, have, you work on the automation in place, understanding how you want to structure this thing, understanding not from a technical perspective, but from a domain perspective how these things are coming. Because when your product owner is coming to you saying, oh, uh, look, we have this problem in, I don't know, the chart X, Y, Z, it's not going to tell you that it's a table written in HTML. It's going to tell you about, it's going to talk about business value. And this is why you need, we need to map 
as engineers uh, these things. And it's very important that you divide that because when you define the domain, it's very easy to divide across multiple uh, teams or people. That is one of the key things that uh, um, is helping you to scale up very quickly your project. Um, decouple behaviors from components. So in Vuex, I think is is doing that great. Um, the thing is that you can have like your template, your DOM component that describe the UI and describe how the user is interacting with that, but it doesn't have a clue on uh, apart from the reactivity part how is going to fetch this data, how is going to handle. This is great. So. For me, Vuex is definitely thumbs up for, for this part here. Um, the other nice thing of, of uh, uh, Vuex is that is, uh, there is um, currently right now a talk on, on micro front end. I don't know what, what they're going to talk about, but um, currently something that we are using a lot in, in my company. So currently micro front end is basically uh, using the same concept that you can have on microservices uh, apply to the front end. That is really difficult. At the moment, there isn't, um, let's say, an architecture that tells you or someone, a guideline that tells you micro front end is exactly this. Uh, we started to uh, to experiment on s several things. There are other companies that are doing something similar, like Zalando, for instance. I started to see a lot of discussion about that, but the vast majority of the time, people are talking about components. And components, you cannot really say that is a micro front end, because I, I would uh, compare a, a, a component to an, a nano service in, with, uh, um, in the microservice architecture. So you need to understand a little bit how micro front end works. In my opinion, micro front ends uh, are working with a sort of a larger domain that is usually or a page or a small single page application that is coordinated by something um, you can call even bus, but it's smarter than an even bus that allows you to um, drag data across multiple single page applications. And Vuex fits perfectly inside that because um, the fact that you have like a small thing that is well defined and everyone is doing exactly its job fits perfect, uh, perfectly for this new architecture that is raising up uh, uh, more and more on front end words, in particular for distributed teams. The other thing is that often we forget it's not just a technology problem. Technology problems often are caused by uh, how we structure our company. Um, so the other thing is that we need to take consideration is, is how we scale with the people side. The fact that is strongly uh, separated uh, the, the uh, Vuex architecture that allows us, and that's why at the beginning I said, let's try to pair, uh, the, let's work on the domain, let's divide what, you, what your team or, your, or yourself as developer has to do in order to then potentially slice that part, remove it, and not affecting the entire application is very important. And that will allow also new joiners to pick up very quickly these things. Because obviously, I think everyone uh, at least once work on a legacy product that has tons of lines of code. And you'll need to spend ages or a week when you start to understand what's going on and why they pick some decision. And maybe we're perfectly fine at the time, but they are not anymore. So this is very, very, uh, very important. So having something that allows you to slice your application quickly allows also new joiners to feel more comfortable inside your code base. Uh, bug can, can, bugs can be easily fixed uh, because there is a, obviously a good, a good dev tools that are provided by the community, but also because the architecture is helping you to understand why a state is not changing, because you know exactly how to, to um, follow up the entire, the entire flow. Um, the other thing is when you work on, on by domain uh, instead by, let's say, the following strictly the architecture, it allows you to spin up multiple teams in, uh, uh, at the same time with great result. So if we if you want to say Vuex in summary, uh, this is a, a table that I created. I think is uh, uh, just trying to get the, the key uh, concept of uh, of Vuex. So um, the state is strict mode uh, can be modified by mutation only. Uh, the state can be accessible by any part of Vuex, um, and uh, including Vue.js components. Often, if you don't need to uh, create a getter that is by the way, the, the suggestion that they have. If you want something that, uh, that I have, so uh, if you want something no-brainer that allows you to uh, have, uh, uh, not forget about the performances, having a getters possibly in certain cases could uh, uh, make the difference to have something performant or not. The getters um, are exposed as uh, to expose computed value uh, from the state. They are smart and they cache stuff. So you have basically you are leveraging the power of the framework that provides all the code and memoization for you without thinking about that. 
uh, the getters are retrieved um, uh, inside the view component by, via computed values, as we saw before. Uh, the action are triggered by only user interaction or other action are uh, synch asynchronous and uh, mainly are used for triggering mutation. So every time that you have a mutation, you know that it's coming from an action. Um, the mutation that is the last part are the only ones that are changing the state. Uh, and mutations are also used for verifying uh, before we, uh, we make a change what happens. So what, if the data are valid. There is another architecture uh, that is called a SAM pattern. Um, basically, in reactive programming, they are doing that, and there is a, a similar thing of mutation that check if the, code, if the state can be passed to the, to the model or not. Uh, and it's a similar concept, and I think it, it is great, uh, th this part. Uh, the only thing, um, okay, so a funny fact before we, we end up this, this session. Um, so I went to, um, I was speaking in a conference um, in February in Amsterdam. And I met uh, uh, Evan, that is the creator of, of uh, Vue.js. Uh, and uh, basically, we were talking with him and with the creator of Mobex. And um, one thing that I was saying is, uh, uh, in my opinion, so if, you, if I see writing code on, on Vuex, the main problem that I saw is there is a lot of repetition often when you want to change the state. So you write the code in the action, then you pass this data that maybe are exactly as you expect, because the, the usually if you, write, if you work, let's say, in, in a healthy uh, company, you don't have to perform much elaboration on, on the client, you mainly on, on the backend. Um, so you, you take that and you pass the mutation. The only thing the mutation it does is store dot uh, variable uh, property and you just fill up the, the, the store. Um, I think that that part could be handled in a certain way by more by the action than, than the mutation. So I spoke, I spoke with them and exactly uh, is, uh, is saying exactly this. Potentially eliminating the separation of uh, action and mutation. So in the next Vuex uh, version, currently we are on 3. Uh, three if I remember well, um, we, we will see that the, the mutation will disappear. That was one of the things that Evan said. Um, yeah, simplify API with a sync await. But you can see basically the future of UX is, is a talk that he did in February. So it's fairly recent at this uh, URL is on YouTube. It's really great. It's 30 minutes that explain uh, how Vue.js ramp up the community and everything, and how basically um, Vuex will uh, evolve in, in the future. But these are a few things that is, is good to know. Last thing, if you see this, this logo, we, it's us. We are hiring, so we, have, uh, we are looking for front-end engineers, Node.js, and DevOps. So if you are interested, uh, let me know. There are quite a few people in the conference in the next um, um, few days, so feel free to grab one of my colleagues or, or me. Uh, for everyone, uh, and the, the publisher gave me this, uh, this discount code. So if you, if you buy the, my book on, on the, uh, the A-Press website, you can have 20% discount with this. Uh, with this code, and now the moment that everyone waited, I hope, uh, is the raffle. <laughs> so, okay, I see quite a few of them. Uh, so, let me see, let me see. Okay, so this one looks looks cool. So, who he... Vladimir, and I don't know the, the, the surname, S-C, uh, okay, perfect. <laughs> okay, cool, you won the book. Thank you very much. Okay, cool, uh, that's really it, so I leave you uh, to, the, to lunch. Uh, if you have any question, feel free to grab me any, any time. I will have another talk uh, later on at five, if I remember well, on uh, reactive streams, so in, in the auditorium. So thank you for, for coming, and I hope that you enjoy the conference. Thank you.